over there. Who can do that? They can do anything to anybody they want. The Zionists can. The Zionists can. They're doing it right now. They do stuff, and then they blame it on other people, and they say, yeah, y'all bad. Anytime they want. But don't worry about it. It's going to cost them. Remember we talked about strategic alliance. That's Iran, that's Iraq, uh, that's Syria, that's Lebanon, and uh, later on Yemen. And they look like they're holding. Everybody's holding. They're going to need to be rebuilt. So all they have to do is have high-tech support from around the world and let Iranians and Syrians and Iraqis build, rebuild their whole country under new technology. You see what I mean? So that we're going to take everything that was supposed to be bad for us and use it to rebuild a old inefficient, right? A whole just inefficient down to earth countries and we'll rebuild them. They're doing that in Iran. I don't know if y'all saw pictures of what Iran looks like. But they are, uh, hey, they got stretches of high rise buildings, 10, 15 stories high all over the place. Iran is 12, 15 might be 18 million people. It's at least 15 million people there. Every time I go back, it's some spread out miles and miles out there. It's just keep growing. <laughs> Ain't nothing you can do about it. Okay, so here's the scheme. Here's the, the, the thing. Global strategy, global strategy of Islam. Uh, number one, it's already happening. The first part about uh, that we talked about uh, in 2011. That's right, 10 years ago. That already, that's, that's, that's already happened. What we talked about before 2016, I mean 2006, when they invaded, right? Okay, all of those things step by step. Now we're in a new phase. What we said a few years ago uh, is now what will develop off of that. What should develop off of that, what we expect according to global situations is, let's call it World War III. It is World War III. Why is it World War Three? World War One was a triple alliance against the Triple Entente, mainly the Ottomans and the Germans, mainly, right? Fighting everybody else, the British, the French. Da, 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 da. Technically, they lost that. So they broke up their Ottoman Empire. That's where Iraq, Syria, Sykes, Picard, all those places around them. That's where all that came from. World War II was uh, Sam's big year again. But that's the, uh, the Axis against the Allies, right? The Axis, Italy, Germany, and Japan. And they gave the people a run for their money, but they they had a couple of crackpots running stuff, and they blew. They could have did better. Not better. It's not better killing a lot of people. But uh, and not strategic. Operation Barbarossa in 1941 in July or June, they shouldn't have happened. Should have let it happened two, three years later after they knocked over Britain. All right? Knocked Britain over first. Okay. You know, already knocked over France. You knock over Britain. Which the Germans could have, could have walked in and knocked them over. Easy. 
the British. No. They said, we'll knock the Soviet Union over. And they thought they had it, and it didn't work. They didn't read Napoleon's thing. He, he went over there, too. It was a pretty big place. It's eight, uh, at least eight time zones. You know, they always say the sun never set on the British Empire. Well, the sun don't set on Russia, just Russia. It's eight time zones. So when it's dark over here, on this side, it's already got light on the other side. It's, it's, the U.S. is three or four time zones. What is it, three hours difference? It's only three hours difference between here and California. Shh. It's eight time zones. You talk about a jet lag, you get a... You get a jet lag from going one part of Russia to the other part, just like you get from going around the world somewhere on the other side. You just be sitting up in the meetings. I don't want to change the subject. We'd be sitting up in the meetings when we go overseas. At one time, I was moderating. And I was saying, okay, brothers, we got to kind of keep a little woke here a little bit. The next thing, <laughs> I was not, I was, it's just slip up on you. But anyway, World War Three. A World War II was the U.S.'s big time. One and two was their time. Okay, when they finished that, the U.S. was running the whole show. Okay, and it was a reconfiguration of the world, just like it was a reconfiguration in the, of the world in World War I. It was a reconfiguration in World War II also. Except they was going to do something different this time. They studied and they wanted to be smart. They said, well, look. Uh, after World War I, we put a, all this pressure on uh, Germany to pay back. And then Germany just borrowed the money from the U.S., which they was on the side. You know, they was kind of helping a little. And uh, uh, Henry Ford, you know, you look in German products, they, that carburetor and everything in the big German trucks was from Ford. Uh, he, he used to call him Heinrich. That's what Hitler would call Heinrich Ford. Henry Ford, that's his homeboy. Yeah, anybody? Of course, it's not, I'm telling you, they look. I'm telling you. The, no, no, this, this daughter, was that his son or daughter? Charles Lindbergh? Charles Lindbergh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the child, the Lindbergh kidnapping. That was the biggest thing that went on in the, in the late 20s. But Lindbergh definitely was a, well, Lindbergh, I guess he would be, you know. And now you got to remember not to go back in history. But it was Germans in America. That's in the early days. They still spoke German. And all the German neighbor, all throughout the Midwest, that's what the German, they Germans, they spoke. When they wanted translators, they, they just said that, how's your German? They say, is it just pigeon German or is it real German? And they'd have guys say, no, I'm, uh, you know, I'll polish up and I'll be. They had American soldiers. And during World War I, when they had a Christmas holiday, they all, they stopped shooting. The, of course, the brass guys say, you can't stop shooting at each other. But the soldiers stopped shooting at each other. They had a Christmas celebration. <laughs> They were the white, the big brass. Like, you can't be doing that. And the German soldiers on this side was talking to the Germans. The white folks in America, they just they were sitting back. Oh, oh. Huh? Yeah, man. The soldiers had no sense. But the brass, they told they could rang them up, said, y'all got to get back to fighting. We're not having no more of that peace and holding hands. Because, you know, the, the guys out there getting killed by the millions, 
They don't want to be running out of that foxhole and all them bombs going, hey, man. So they, hey, man, can you shoot over that way, shoot up in the air? You know, they'll, if you leave them around long enough, that's what they're going to start doing. Okay, we out of, we out of stuff. Yeah, they just shot all up in the air. The only way you die is a bullet fall down on you from way up there. Anyway, let me get back to uh, World War I, World War II. Why is this World War Three? Because it's a global war. And now we want to kind of... Uh, kind of line it up a little bit. Uh, we already talked about the usual suspects in the Middle East. But remember now, we got the U.S. going into the war drums with China, the war drums with Putin, right? That's all they did. All of a sudden, China is not friendly anymore. Well, China shouldn't be your friend because China did the old, you know, white folks get mad. That's why they be mad at me all the time. White folks are mad at them. China was, oh, boy, I'm telling you. They're just mad at them because they just Chinese laundry man, that white man, oh, bossy, bossy. And, you know, the Chinamen just steal everything. All, and he couldn't send nothing over there. They call it transfer of technology. If you're going to make cars here, we want the whole things from tires to everything. We want the transfer of technology so we know how to do it. They saw these boys so far back in the woods, they won't know nothing about how to, and they gave it to them in the 90s, 2000, by the 2000s starting to look different around here. Now, two years ago, when it boss man finally woke up, you know when he woke up? When, what's his name, gave that talk on uh, Chinese characteristics. That we're going to transform things, and we are, but with Chinese characteristics. Just think about it. Go back two and a half, three years, they was mad. Why? Because they believed that their liberal democracy, whatever they call it, once people get rich, they're going to do that. And they'll always be grateful to good old America. But the Chinamans has got good sense. They got a memory. They've been around here longer, probably longer civilization, longer than anybody. They've been here. And they didn't have ups and downs, and you know what I mean. And they had, they liked the Persian Empire, the China. All of those people been around. So the Chinese just played up on boss man, and pretty soon, hey, they had knocked him over. Boss man wasn't number one anymore. Or if he was, he's number one in words. Boss man is sad. The ships come into America and drop off everything and go back empty. It's import, no export. We went from fat wealthy to fat poor. We're still fat, but we're just poor. That's worse. See, if you're fat poor, you get fat and lazy too, and you don't want to do nothing. And you watch TV, pick up another 50, 60 pounds, and, and get even lazier. And then you give up. You won't have no fight left in you. That's America today, right? When you walk up and down the street, who do you see? You see girls. You know, it used to be bad. A girl used to wouldn't wear no... If she was kind of chubby, she wouldn't wear, in fact, 
You know what? The average weight when I was coming up for girls was 132 pounds. I gave you a thousand dollars for every girl a certain height that weigh 132 pounds. That's, that was the weight. That was my wife's weight, and she was tall, 132 pounds. So everybody was a. If you got somebody 140, they was what we call healthy. Look at that child there. Look at that good lad. She was healthy, right? People are different. And then in those days, do you know white women had the worst bills? They had the woman called uh, Marilyn Monroe. They said she is beautiful and healthy. Marilyn Monroe, this is what? 36, 22, 36, not that I remember that stuff, but that's, that's T90. T90, the heavyweight champion, 